I V M. Hey everybody, quick request once again, if you could help us out by filling out our survey, it's at ivmpodcast.com slash survey. This really helps us talk to advertisers about the kinds of people listening to these shows. Really do appreciate your help and we're going to be doing a random drawing and we'll be sending out some IVM swag. Hope you enjoy that. Welcome to yet another episode of the Vishal Gondal Show. As always, we will be deconstructing the life of a superstar. And this time, I have somebody who is an author, a poet, a philosopher, a brand, an institution. And especially when you talk about health, fitness, exercise, everything, he is the legendary Dr. Mickey Mehta. He's the one who can get you energized, naturalized, optimized, maximized. And he has started a wellness revolution. And he calls this very beautifully that he's going to make all of you Mickey Mice. So <laughs> welcome to the show, Mickey. Really, really nice to see you here. Uh, Vishal, thank you so much. That's very generous of you, very kind of you. And we are all fellow humans in the same business, rather in the same karma. Absolutely. It's in the same karma. And today we are going to talk a lot about karma and the Bhagavad Gita wow. and your philosophy of life, health and wellness. But before that, you know, you are now, of course, nobody's going to believe it if I tell them, but you are now 59 years old. You're touching 60. Very much. You are in, you started Almost 50 years back, you know, you, you started yeah. doing yoga when you were nine years old. Yes. You, you started using words like wellness and fitness and mindfulness. Holistic when health. Possibly holistic health yes. in the 1990s. Yes. When these words possibly did not exist. So tell me, let's go back to your early days. At the age of nine, how did you get into yoga? I mean, kids at that age are running around and playing cricket. And, you know, of course, uh, there were many, many other activities which could kept you stimulated. But what got you to yoga? You know, my cousins, they were, I mean, two cousin brothers. One is Viraf Majra, Farooq Majra, younger elder. They were into karate with uh, Sensei Parvez Mystery. And of course, Sensei Parvez Mystery is a veteran uh, karate exponent teacher, legendary himself. And they used to have huge muscles and they used to practice every day in the class at home. And I used to look at them in absolute awe. I said, wow, what great bodies. So I come, came back home and I told my mom that, mom, I want to join the gym. So mom said, okay, you can go and join the YMCA gym at Lemington Road. We used to live at Grand Road, corner of Grand Road. It used to be, uh, it used to be called Playhouse. So I went to the Lemington Road YMCA. And they said that, hello, kiddo, how are you? No, no weights for you. <laughs> so I was <laughs> very disappointed, you know, and said, oh, what can I do? They said, why don't you make your own small gym in your house? I said, that's a great idea. I came home running and I told my mom and it was just a day before my birthday, my ninth birthday. So I told my mom that, listen, I want to my birthday gift for tomorrow is I'll you buy me gym equipment. So, you know, uh, they said, uh, they had given me all the list of things to be got at home. So my mom said, how much would it cost? I said, anything between two to two and a half thousand bucks. My mom said, my salary is 250 rupees. Your dad's yeah. salary is just about 300 rupees. Can you imagine 50 years back, those salaries were good enough to run a small middle class home, good enough to make two ends meet and, you know, simple non-branded clothes. So she said, that's not happening. So, so to put in context, we are talking about something around 1970, correct? Exactly. Exactly. So then my mom said that, look, do one thing. Your sister is practicing yoga. And I remember my sister used to do 180 degree splits. She used to touch her ball of the feet to her occipital cavity. So it was very flexible. She used to do yoga in a JB Pitted school. So I, yeah, I said, okay. And, and your sister is your elder sister? Yeah, four years, four years elder to me. She's also a healer. Her name is Jennifer Mystery. She's a healer of kinds. So then I said, okay. So that very evening on the eve of my birthday, I started practicing yoga. And you know, Vishal, it used to so happen that every day I used to exercise 
locking up the door. I used to take a small, a brass lota of water with rose syrup. Those days we used to get calverts. <laughs> so red is your brand color. So calvert rose syrup, completely synthetic, nothing natural about it. I didn't know about it. So I used to, you know, fill up that lota with calvert syrup. I used to drink it and I used to be drenched. And my floor used to, there used to be a puddle of sweat. <laughs> so my whenever my sister, father, mother would come inside, they said, you're purposely carrying the lota of water, throwing it on the ground to show how sincerely you're exercising. So that was, I mean, those were the days. And the journey started. And I don't think I must have missed even a hundred, total of hundred days of exercising in these last 50 years. But, but what were your friends doing, right? I mean, again, like when you're nine and 10 years old, you are very influenced with your peer group. Very much. So what were your friends doing that time? So I was very much into chess. My dad taught me chess. I was into carom. Yeah, I was yeah, into playing marbles. I was into cycling. And I was into Viti Dandu, you know, yeah. Gilly Danda. <laughs> and I used to, I used to be a, a champion of tops. So Hat Jali. Lagori, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and we used to play Lagori. Then we used to play Kitty Kitty. Then Hutu Tutu. So we were like, I, I mean, uh, boisterous games. A lot of people may not even know about these games today. They must be all talking about video games, but... But folks out there, especially the millennials who are listening to this show, ki ye sab games hote the aur yehi khela jata tha. Uh, and Abadubi. 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 Oh my chor God. Police. Get and chor police. Chor police. And Thappa, I spy tipped it in. Yeah, exactly. And where all we used to hide most unassuming places. Can you imagine, Vishal? We used to have a pinjra. So uh, a, a particular case where we used to put soil clothes. Nobody would imagine that somebody who could go and hide in there <laughs> and we could manage them. No, but I think, I think, I think the, the, the question I have is that, see, today's kids, it's very difficult to make them do any activity. So true. So They're true. all distracted, right? So true. But you, even in 1970s, had the focus to do a workout till there was a puddle of sweat. I mean, and every day, every day. Every day, right? And 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 was that workout largely yoga or was was that aerobics or what? So it's it started with yoga, and then yoga remained the mainstay, main frame workout. But I kept on adding pull ups, push ups, uh, bouncing, spot running, and duns and bitucks and duns and bitucks. You know, so you know at Grant Road we used to see posters of Zibisco, Dara Singh, Randava, Nakaposh. All those wrestlers used to come down to India. And they, uh, you know, at NSCI, there was a wrestling ring. And looking at those posters every day, I used to come charged up and do some extra exercises. So it would be a mix of everything, but yoga to finish it all. No, but given that, you know, I mean, of course, you come from a Parsi family, right? Very true. This is not, you know, Parsis are not supposed to be doing all these things, right? They are the intellectual, you know, they are. Absolutely. They are the, they are the bankers. Uh, they are the. Uh, mathematicians and teachers, the lawyers, and of course, businessmen also. Yeah. But I think in the area I grew up, Vishal, we, my area was called red light. It was a red light area. So Grant Road Playhouse used to be called Pill House, where we used to have theaters like Dowlet Talkies, Taj Talkies, Alfred Talkies. And a little on the outskirts, we had Shalima Talkies, a super cinema, and a little still uh, in the safer zones, we had Novelty, Apsara. So we used to have gambling dens and there was a small Parsi community nestled there. So we used to have gambling dens. We used to have bootleggers and smuggling used to happen. And of course, prostitution. So I grew up in there and rough and tough life. I've seen murders happening before me. So the dadas once upon a time in 10, 12 years, I've seen them crawling the same streets with boils and, you know, can barely walk and fly sitting on their boils, on their bruises. So I've seen it all, you know, and I've grown up there and was a very popular child. They used to call me Papu, but, you know, in my area. So before they called you Papu, I want to know the mystery of your name, Mickey, because, you know, this is not a common name in 1970 also, yeah. you know, or whatever. So I'll tell you. Uh, how, how did this name come about? So, you know, my uh, even in Parsi, since we took it after Hindus, so my Rashi was Murtha. And it was Siha Rasi. <laughs> so Martha, so my dad said, okay, Macintosh was very, very anglicized those days. 
So my dad said, okay, I'll call you Mac. <laughs> so by the second, third day, my grandmother was not so very literate. She started calling me, I saw Mac, Mac, my mad, mad. Okay. So my dad switched to, you know, Mickey Rooney was very famous then. So he switched to Mickey. Yeah. So a meaningless name, but in today's context, Mickey Meta, if you see the figure of speech, so, you know, so, you know, reputation, alliteration, both inside it and sounds good. No, and Mickey is such a positive connotation, right? I very, mean, very. It, the name itself gives you positivity. You can't imagine a very grumpy or very tough Mickey. You always think of Mickey as somebody who's going to energize you. And Mickey the mouse who's always playful. And I'm still very playful, Vishal. I used to play such pranks in school. I was thrown out of every school. Every school. Right till my matriculation, till my college, thrown out of even my college. So I know your father was in a bank and your mother bank, was yeah, yeah. A, a teacher, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. what were they thinking? My, no, my mother, sorry, sorry. My mother in part time used to do tuitions, but otherwise she was a secretary. Secretary. The, a steno, steno, So I'm just thinking, you know, what must be their thought process? What you know, this guy... Because career was very important, right? And especially uh, you are the only son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, especially in Parsi households, I know that how the kids are really, really taken care of. You are very, you know, I have a lot of Parsi friends and I keep seeing them hmm. with their kids. The fathers especially are very, actually the whole community is very involved in the kids' growth. But so what did they think about you? Unko kya laga, kya hoga? So, you know, Vishal, uh, I would say fortunately, I will not say unfortunately, both my, both my parents were working <laughs> and I hardly went to school. I used to take a local train from Chadgir to Vira, Vira to Chadgir, two rounds, eat the sandwiches, come back home. And then later in life, I went to every theater possible, 12 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 9. My mother had a hard time finding me of the 9, 10 theaters in the 3 kilometer radius. She had to really pick her brains to see where could I be. And she used to pull me out of theatres beating me. She used to come <laughs> and ask the, the, you know, the usher that, you know, <laughs> gora gora parsi ka, ah, aapka andar hai. Wo beta andar hai. and I would see one movie 30 times, 40 times. There was a movie called Varis. Then, you know, Jitendra, Mahmood, Prem Chopra, I've seen it 30, 40 times. A movie called Do Phool, Mahmood, Vinod Mera. 40, 50 times. Mera Gaon, Mera Desh, 40, 50 times. A Shole, much later in life, once again, 20, 30 times. And every dialogue, every background music by heart. By heart. So, I would say fortunately, that life gave me a lot of awakening and opening up to perspectives. Seeing the kind of world I was born in and the experiences of not going to school. Then my mom packed me up to a boarding school. So my last... Four years. Yeah, and I, I know you you went to you went to Nasik. Yeah, I went to Nasik. So I went to Nasik. So first two years, my mom said, send him to Bosla Military School. Ah. A military school. <laughs> so tell me something. Nasik, that time, used to take like eight hours to go from Mumbai? Or no? Yeah, almost six hours. Almost six hours by road and maybe four and a half, five, a five hours by train. Yeah. Today, it's a different ball game so, altogether. You know, at what age did you end up in a boarding school? Because again, in the 70s, 80s, right? I mean, this was like... You know, sending your son to boarding school because he's not studying, he's found in a movie theater. Yeah. What did your parents think that what would you do in your, what did they want you to do? Did they ever tell you something? They they said, ke boss, you will become a hajam. <laughs> Hajamat karega kya tu? You know, my dad used to do this. <laughs> and and there was, a, there was an example in our building that a boy of a very rich family and the family eroded in wealth and eventually he became a uh, a person who serves, no, person who serves in Parsi weddings. Okay. And we, so serves and cooks. So we would, you know, Bavarchi kind of. So, but it was a very derogatory term. So my mom would say in Gujarati, ke bhai, tu babarchi vansa chale, you know, what will you become? So then she said, ke, okay, let's stone on the heart. Let's send him, pack him to the boarding school. He'll get discipline there. So here comes, I went to the boarding school and thrown out of boarding school also. Thrown out of there too. <laughs> also, and that to military school. Wow. Then my father, with his good offices, got me into a Parsi boarding school called Boy Town Public School. And that principal was also a terror called Bejan Desai, great academician. And there also, close to the SSC exams, I was a head boy of the school. 
thrown out of that school too so i mean mischief mischief man so so tell me tell me miki you know see what you did like karate and yoga that is yeah, discipline yeah. and practice and you know much later yeah 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 but you were a complete you know like you were like a tezab ka anil kapoor ekdam so in school also i used to spend most of the time in the sports room working out so wo kilo kilo ke wazan hote the na do do kilo char char kilo and used to make four arms you know shoulders wow. biceps so i went to boarding school in 75 1975 and push ups and stool push ups and vertical push ups and craziness you know hanging from the bar and struggling to do that first pull up it took me 3 4 months struggling on the strength of my biceps to pull myself up but then we managed and, and tell me what was the con- that that time there was no protein or there were no supplements nothing, nothing. Matlab, what were you what was your food food was constant hunger that's number one in boarding school <laughs> cold climate and r- everything rationed yeah everything rationed it was not an orphanage but for discipline <laughs> so everything was portion controlled and we were perennially hungry perpetually hungry we used to rob lockers of rich students unke chude unka achar bread jo mila we used to just eat gobble it all off biscuits biscuits so so tell me are you in touch with any of your school friends what did they Very become much. what did they become unka what happened to their career so okay man is mr parvez damania i mean so of course he was with me in st james boys academy not in nase so but any all school friends put together so many 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 uh, many became chartered accountants and typical doctors and typical engineers and i really didn't know what i was cut out for <laughs> so when i came back from school my dad would you would see an advertisement okay oberoys waiter ki jagah khali hai go and give an interview my mom would see okay there is a radio mechanic workshop happening somewhere go and register so these were the things and i i literally went through the interviews but i must give credit to your parents right they were extremely forward looking for that yeah. that time of the year or that time of the century right yeah 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 very that much. time matlab you know that this kind of even today's parents are not like this right absolutely, i mean absolutely absolutely uh, they are pushing kids for academics and pushing kids to do thing and here uh, you know your father so so your father and mother did, were they born up in mumbai itself or they came they migrated no no very much very much in mumbai and they both went through almost half the college but didn't graduate but they could speak better english than the principals of most of the schools because they learned queens english they used to read english novels they used to uh, read thesaurus renan martin you know these were the books we grew up with so which is you know the background of whatever little english i speak comes out of there so so tell me from this happy go lucky mysterious mischievous child yeah how did you suddenly become a karate black belt which requires dedication commitment completely uh, the opposite of what you just talked about so you know once i came back from school after matric or ssc in those days so once again back to my cousins and they used to live bang opposite and i started going to karate classes with them by that time one of my cousins was established was an established karate teacher so i started assisting him as a man friday going around one of his man fridays with bags and if otherwise somebody would do three classes a week i would do three classes a day because he would go through schools he would go through different classes and that's how my experience and interest in karate grew and also i was i was very flexible because my yoga was on so i used to still do my play, uh, splits i used to still do my halasan my sarvangasan my chakra chakrasan so my practice of yoga i never give up because that gave me a very different kick and karate gave me a very different kick so because of my school background of doing weights with those vajan my forearms were like popeyes <laughs> <laughs> you know and and i was like i was very stocky i was three times my size huh? this is after becoming a vegetarian and i would eat anything and everything 10 15 eggs a day i would have a meal and immediately an hour later if somebody would ask me i would have one more meal <laughs> and probably have six meals <laughs> and very often very often everywhere in grand road wherever i would you know see a bhajia wala ragda wala kebab wala i would teach <laughs> they used to give me free they used to feed me free and and invariably every second third night i used to vomit and my mom, my mother instead of cajoling me she used to bash me up 
के साला गधा खा खा के खा खा के सर सो आई मीन व्हाट यू टेल मी यू मस्ट बी एक्सट्रीमली पॉपुलर विद द लेडीज आल्सो राइट हाउ मेनी गर्लफ्रेंड्स डिड यू हैव नॉट देन नॉट देन इन माय लास्ट सेकंड बोर्डिंग स्कूल माय लास्ट बोर्डिंग स्कूल एंड एथ स्टैंडर्ड देयर वाज अ यू नो नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न गर्ल and her name was sornakala thapa just two days back somebody reminded me she was very pretty very fair pretty golden hair very natural and very athletic body so i used to write her love letters and we quietly met once in a garden school garden and all we did was we just held hands <laughs> that's it <laughs> Anyways, I think we'll have a separate call on all your other other extracurricular. Absolutely. But yeah. tell me something. So when did this become like a serious option that you know you went and joined? I know Ramada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but before you took your first job in this fitness sector, hmm. uh, when did you think that this is even a sector or even a job I want to pursue? So what happened for two years and three years that I did my serious karate from eighty one to eighty three, eighty four. I got myself qualified as a black belt because the amount of training and practice I did, and I was very good in style and grace. My physical, my physicality was full of grace. So you know, so that was there, and uh, and thereafter, I just branched out and started teaching karate in schools. You know, started team having my own small humble classes. And 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 this was also the same time when Bruce Lee. Uh, I think. Bruce I think Lee a few le- few years later, few years later, but certainly inspired, very inspired. And then reading up happened. Then around eighty four, eighty five. You know, I'll have to share this with you. I was probably one of the first nutritionist, a full pleasure proper nutritionist, in Bombay then, with the background of. Naturopathy. Wow! Because Kavita Mukhi and Dr. Vijaya Venkat, they both started a program in Bombay College, Bombay College of uh, Nutrition, and in KC College. And I was their first batch of students. Even today, Kavita Mukhi remembers me. Even Anju Venkat remembers me. Of course, um, Mrs. Vijaya Venkat is no more. But Kavita Mukhi and Vijaya Venkat, they both were pioneers. of alkaline food they were the pioneers of therapeutic diet they were the pioneers of natural eating processes regional seasonal time wise hunger wise and those laws are still constant that which never changes that wisdom which never changes so, so i which year in which 84 you 84 85 and i had a choice either to continue as a karate ka or karate trainer or to become a nutritionist but i took the third choice Of started pers- or beginning to pursue holistic health, because I I gotten into meditation. I started listening to Osho by then, you know. So it, I got into holistic health, and I started lots of research. And there wasn't much. There was no Google, not much, not many books. So I mean, the first thing I ever learned about fitness and immunity, that Vijay, I mean, Kavita Mukhi taught me that trampoline. People use trampoline. for bouncing and bouncing was good for lymphatic node stimulation and lymphatic drain and you know something today it is supposed to be the biggest biohack ha ah, yeah, great uh, everybody in the biohacker community is talking about uh, uh, using the the bouncing yeah. so in fact i was going to get one very soon absolutely we must because i think community community bouncing rings which can accommodate almost 10 12 people bouncing together bounce jump take a drop bounce back tumble turn i mean this is what i'm looking forward to do in future like gymnastics parkour so i want to learn all these things you know the child in me wants to do monkey business amazing so so 84 you went in the world of nutrition but then you went into also doing massages how would did that happen yes so you know my cousins used to rag me <laughs> to chal ye daba wo daba you know typically because they were my gurus no so one of them used to rag me a lot and somehow naturally i could move very well with my thumbs fingertips my palm heels it came to me so naturally and um, that's it and then i said okay boss anybody wants massage tell me for 2 rupees 3 rupees to start with of course eventually it went to 20 rupees 50 rupees and when i used to get out of a massage I, my my clothes used to get completely drenched and soaked i would say right from my shirt until my crotch it used to be wet 
and i god knows what people thought of me when i stepped out of massages <laughs> <laughs> but that was a plight and vishal those days traveling by local trains i traveled by local trains almost for very many decades from schooling days to thereafter whatever and one had to literally hang on one fingertip grip and sometimes even get rubbed by homos <laughs> and being yeah and and all the bhaiyas in there with their one hand up head straight into their armpits <laughs> and eyes into their you know full sarso ka tel wala head so those were the experiences so a homo on one side smelling guy on the other side and a tel wala guy on the other side so we were like i mean life was fun i mean we lived it up we lived it up so at what time did you get your first job because you know getting somebody to then employ you yeah. you know doing this for friends and other people was different but when did you get your first real job so i think in the in the year 84 85 i went for a scouting trip uh, with my other cousins to kashmir and it was in kashmir that i met my wife oh Kashmir Kashmir wow how did that happen she was 17 and by that time in 84 85 i think i was 22 23 probably you know or whatever and she's originally from kashmir no she is a she is a zoroastrian irani so persian irani so i met her there and uh, so of course i fell in love there and today it's almost 32 33 years we are together um, 35 years 35 years and and she lives in uh, used to live in She used to live in Kashmir, or she also used to live in Mumbai. No, no, no. She she came on the same trip ah, okay. through somebody else. Fantastic! Uh, wow. So Kashmir has a has a big part in uh, or a big importance in your life. Absolutely. So I want to I I want to transition a bit here. Yeah. You know, eighty four, eighty five. You were entering the world of health, and you know, you did your course on nutrition. And look at today. In fact, I think today. the problem is that there is more misinformation more confusion and more challenges around health than 84 85 yeah so looking at the last 30 40 years what did you think go wrong in the society for this thing to happen i think the influx of the media the television radio glamour film stars hollywood bollywood television now ramp walk and uh, you know we become very gullible fans we become very gullible fans i always tell people that look up to real life heroes so we have three real life heroes discipline people in bollywood ir bir phate ek rahen ir ek rahen bir ek rahen phate ek rahen hum so ek rahen akshay ek rahen tiger ek rahen bachchan aur ek rahen hum mm. so you know these three guys are typical very uh you know there is symbolic way represent discipline and fitness health the vegetarians very focused so those days also we had people who had good bodies but not great bodies so there were likes of dharmendra vinod khanna and dara singh himself dara singh himself but then the thing was ke 40 sunday khana 20 liter doodh peena i mean whatever i mean a little of hyperbole figure of speech but whatever and uh, दस दस तंदूरी मुर्गिया खाना बीस आलू आलू पराठे खाना सो एज यू सेट सो मच ऑफ मिस इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड नो प्रॉपर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन यू नो वट इज माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग इट द मोस्ट फनी पार्ट इन माई आई नाउ फनी दैट यू नो वो पंजाबियों में कहा जाता है कि जब आपकी तोंद आती है विच मीन्स यूर डूइंग वेल ओके 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 सो दे यू से अगर आपका पेट आ गया मतलब that is a sign of prosperity bilkul <laughs> bilkul so i think the problem in the society really was that you know a lot of times are what are today symbols of you know poor health and obesity were considered signs of prosperity yes and also they were considered you know handsome mm. like dharmendra always had a slight paunch in his in his second half of the career second half yeah even bachchan ji if you see bachchan ji in the latter half of his career always had a slight paunch so you know i think there the craft the personality the stylized acting all was very important today what is important that everybody should look like as if they were manufactured on assembly lines except barring a few like akshay literally he is into t- t- real fitness and he doesn't look like somebody manufactured on assembly line lines you know so well those days once again as you said 
there was no information on nutrition. So after I met my wife in Kashmir, there was a pressure on me to have a regular job. Ye kya karate farate? Bhais Munda Giri, what are you doing? <laughs> so there was a guy in our karate class called Malcolm Koilo who owned Palm Grove Hotel. Hmm. And they actually used to own the Palm Grove shacks and on Juhu Beach. Rahejas approached them and converted that into Palm Grove Hotel and he was one of the managing directors. So he said, Bhaiya, aja. Gym khali hai. This is where you can fit in, nowhere else. And that time, the number of gyms in Mumbai itself, there are very few, right? I mean, I, I remember only five-star hotels had gyms. That was... Had gyms and there were bhaiya gyms. Yeah. And there were local gyms where there was cast iron, wrought iron. And I used to go to a gym in Juhu in Irla called TN Merchant Gym. Parallel bar, single bar. And, you know, rough, all those rough weights. Yeah. And we used to have all the calluses here and hard hands yeah. and doing martial arts, karate also, knuckle push-ups, palm push-ups, single palm, single hand push-up, two finger push-up and the works and push-up with somebody standing on you, sitting on you and doing crunches with somebody sitting on your stomach and two people standing on your stomach and you have to hold your stomach tight and raise your legs high and to get a cobbler's position. And completely down flat, we used to get people stand on us to open up, open our inner thighs. Wow. So some kind of hard training we've done. And my karate black belt exam was a four hours rigorous output of techniques, including sparring, including breaking techniques and so on. So, so, so Mickey, clearly, right? I mean, you were far ahead of your times. Yeah. Uh, because these are things which people are talking now as if this was invented or discovered like just last one year, right? I mean, yeah, holistic yeah, yeah. health and especially after COVID, immunity and alkaline food and all this is becoming like suddenly that we have discovered this, right? These were all known and especially in India, you know, in naturopathy, Ayurveda, this is being documented, well documented. So true. So what made you to change, for example, vegetarianism. I know there is a big talk about, uh, you know, food, which plays a big role. So when did you turn vegetarian from somebody who ate everything Hmm. to somebody who was very selective about what you ate? Uh, When did that happen? So, you know, Gurdas, Kaleji, Bheja, I mean, Khima, everything was there, Nalli Nihari. But when I went to this uh, Kavita Mukhi Vijaya Venkats program, uh, called Nutrition Plus at that time, I went through a process of transformation. I gave up my sugar for a while. I lost almost 15, 20 kilos from being a martial arts karate car to shrunk. I became a vegetarian. And people thought, ke bhai, ko HIV ho gaya kya? because 85, 88, you know, HIV was in. <laughs> so, and my waist was 29. Then, you know what happened? I suddenly got a flu attack. And my fever crossed 101, 102. And I remember the words of Kavita Mukhi and Vijay Venkar. Don't take medicines. Fever means your bacilli has gone up and your body temperature goes high to kill the bacilli bacteria in your body. So I resisted and fought with my parents and fought with my aunts. Then I called up Vijay Venkar ji and said, look, they are forcing me to have medicine. He's saying, if the temperature is so high, take it. But, you know, I was so sincere. So sincere. Of course, I went off non-veg for a while and came back because so many awakenings happened. So there was one particular day which literally made me a big thorough vegetarian that I was studying about why vegetarianism. I study, studied about Einstein pain wave theory. It's a great hypothesis to understand that how the collective pain of everyone on this planet, not only not only animals, of everyone on this planet can bring about catastrophes like storm. Collective pain of everybody. Collective wow. pain in their subconscious, deep in their subconscious. How does it translate into or metamorphize into storms, volcanoes, earthquakes, fires, and whatever put together? And there. Then one day I was, I remember very clearly, I was on the Tardev pool, Tardev bridge. And I was driving by and I could hear the pain of the baby calves, lamb, sheep, every, everybody being cut somewhere or the other at that particular moment in time. It literally happened to me. 
and I became a vegetarian. Wow. But I still drool when I see fresh, fried fish, when I see saliboti, when I see nalini hari. See, I'm, my mouth is watering. But consciousness prevails over instincts. You must have heard about Pavlovian theory. So this is typically Pavlovian. Talk about it, you drool. Think about your drool. But consciousness prevails over instincts. So tell me somebody who has missed every class lecture, not completed school, thrown out of every college. How the hell did you get into Pavlovian theory and Albert Einstein and Mahabharata and Bhagavad Gita? What happened? Reading. Reading. You know, I mean, my first influencer was Osho. Somebody introduced me to many tapes on Osho. And the first tape I read was uh, Samadhi, but it was more on meditation and more about Vairagya. And, you know, Osho's theories were very misunderstood. Osho simply said that if you want to transcend any kind of obsession, go deep into it with open eyes and fulfill your society yourself till the time that the society kicks in with deep awareness. Fulfill yourself so well that you are done with it for life. Mm. And then you transcend that. So desire after desire, desire after desire, as it rises, you fulfill yourself. So just to kind of paraphrase, what he means is, yeah. if you have to do it, eat chicken, eat so much chicken, so much chicken, so much chicken, that next time you will not want to have chicken in your life. You get sick of it, and you will realize that chicken has nothing to deliver to you. Got it. It will not transform your mind. It will not uplift your spirit. It will not bring about Sachetan Man. It will not give you Ritambara Pragya. It will not give you the understanding of Yatha Pinde, Tatha Brahmande. But I think the problem was that everybody only heard one thing with Osho that you could do unlimited sex and that is what happened, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, but his one philosophy was very clear. That if you suppress anything so hard, it becomes your obsession. Exactly. So be free of it. Be free of it. So what are the top two, three things from the Osho theory? Like I did not know about this idea of do something so much. Yeah. So what are the other highlights of what you learned from Osho? So Osho introduced me to Zen. Osho introduced me to Tao. Even Bruce Lee introduced me to Tao. But Osho introduced me to Zen and Buddhism. And uh, so and I, I then deeply researched Tao Te Ching. So Tao Te Ching is one of the finest philosophies on earth today. So, you know, Tao Te Ching, one of the philosophies of, you know, it says, like the Chinese emperor kept on asking a Buddhist monk, when will you teach me self-realization? And the Buddhist monk always said, not till the snow turns red. The snow could otherwise never turn red. Now decades pass by. So the willingness of the Chinese emperor and his desperation and his sincerity, he took a sword, cut his hand, dripped blood on the snow and said, now the snow has turned red, teach me. Mm. So from after that king came the one hand bow. Oh. It was with the respect to that, that now Shifu's do one hand bow. Yeah, I didn't know this story. Wow, this is such an amazing yeah. story. Yeah. So, yeah. so you... Also one thing, also one thing. Bodhidharma, when he went from India to China... He went because he was invited by Chinese emperors. They were very curious and intrigued. Okay, what is this meditation all about? So when he entered China, he was so well respected. He put his footwear on his head and he walked. So the first thing the Chinese emperor asked him, why are you walking with your chappal on your head? He's saying, I have to constantly remind myself that the higher is not higher than the lower. Mm. That the higher wow. should never be higher than the lower. There are no, everything should be equal. And there are no first amongst equal. So that was the first lesson he taught the Chinese emperor. Huh? But the dhyan was pronounced in Chinese language as dhyan. dhyan. And dhyan became zen. Ah, so zen is nothing but dhyan. Dhyan, dhyan. Ah. Wow. And zen is nothing but empty your mind and mind the empty space. This is the message of zen. It is not, mindfulness is not bullocks. Empty the mind and mind the emptiness. But tell me something, then how are people peddling their own versions of this, right? So there is yeah. you know, Sri Sri Ravi Sankar doing Baba Ramdev, you know, Sadguru, then there are mindfulness. I mean, there are like 
today if you have to do meditation and search there are 500 results of different meditation and you don't know what to do you are you have to meditate over what meditation yeah so you know like typically when when arvin mill exports denim pepe will make jeans out of the same denim and hugo boss and armani will make the jeans out of the same denim the reality doesn't change mm. brands keep changing but the reality doesn't change and uh, interpretations keep changing it gets diluted the real meditation or the real dhyan is actually no focus no concentration it is defocus and drop your concentration it is actually no doing anything stop doing start being meditation is stop doing start being and being gets you in the rhythm and being in the rhythm puts you in the flow so the four pillars of wellness otherwise are put together like this conserve your breath preserve your body be established in the flow and be synchronized in your unit rhythm with the unity rhythm exactly no suddenly everybody is talking of card as uh, synchronizing from with your uh, uh, all the rhythms and energies and all of that right but yeah, yeah. you talked about this like so early and i remember that you know you were among the first to even be adopted you know miss india's Absolutely. who were supposed to be like perfectly crafted uh, yeah, beans yeah, yeah. and they were getting trained by you so what was your experience dealing with the miss india's of the world who suddenly wanted to become intelligent and healthy and they were known to not eat and you know starve and all the stories around miss india competitions i got a lot of brick bats for that So when I launched my Learn Swimming in 24 Hours program in the year 1993, Learn Swimming in 20 in 24 hours. hours, and I have I have a Limca book of world record for that. So you can teach anyone swimming in two hours. Forget 24 hours. Now I can teach anyone in two hours, but somebody shouldn't have a phobia of learning. Phobia of learning. Phobia of water. Phobia of water. So so all the listeners out here, Dr. Mickey Mehta is. challenging you that he can teach you swimming if you don't know in 2 hours provided you don't have a phobia that's the only condition yeah but there's one more condition if they hire me they will have to go for hair transplant because they will lose all the hair pay my fees <laughs> <laughs> see listen it's not about the fees it is not the fee right if if you can actually train train somebody uh, a, a a new skill 100% uh, you know how can you do that how can you do that so you know what happened that my fame my claim to fame was miss india but once i was very famous I once read about Manpreet Bhar winning Miss India. So Jagdeep Kapoor, the you know Samsika marketing, he was my friend in from the karate days. He's a he's a man behind the success story of Appy and Fruity, one of the genius marketing guys. So he told me, Mickey, write to the Miss India people. He gave me the fax number of Mr. Pradeep Gua, and I wrote a letter to him that, sir, Miss India is about building personalities. Allow me to groom them. and i will give them meditation i will give them workouts i'll make them breathe i'll build personalities out of them he answered me he called me over and manpreet bra was my first student who was about to go to i think some foreign country i trained her and she was the first one in india i mean after many years she bagged runners up first runners up miss india miss universe wow and then of course for 15 years I trained Gulpanag, Lara Datta, Dina Hayden, uh, the likes of uh, Yukta Mukhi, Priyanka Chopra, and Dia Mirza, and the works almost two hundred girls. You know, so, so every major Bollywood actress at that time, beauty pageant had gone through your your training in that sense. Also, I will not do name dropping, but every major film star approached me for training, but we didn't work on fees. and even big production biggest production house of those days called me over and there was a movie being made with six new stars and the sun was going to direct it and i was invited that to train those six people i'll tell you it was mohabbate wow and manish manish malhotra took me there to meet aditya chopra aditya was very excited and uh, i said okay i'll get them in kick ass shape very good shape i'll get them well poised mentally also because body language is also very important attitude is important so after the super success of all my miss india wins because all my girls were winning international crowns so then mr yash chopra uh, mr yash chopra called me over the same day in the afternoon and said 
मिकी बेटा पागल हो गया इतना पैसा ये वर्जिश करने का ऐसा सर वर्जिश करने का नहीं है सर ये ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन है अरे क्या ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन है चलो ठीक है देखेंगे जब हो जाएगा तो दे देंगे अच्छा सर नहीं सर मुझे पैसों की बहुत जरूरत है एनी वे इट डेंट वर्क आउट बिकॉज आई वॉज वेरी आई वॉज वेरी स्टक बट आई थिंक इन हाइंड साइड आई मेड अ मिस्टेक such a big guy such a big guy such a veteran filmmaker and i acted behave very stupid no, but i think but i think i think miki the point is that you were the first person at least in india yeah. who said that this is a uh, important like this whole thing of personal training transformation yeah. is important and it needs to be valued some people valued it and some people didn't value it that's a different question because today if you see every bollywood star has a different nutritionist a different personal trainer a different meditation trainer yeah, yeah. so what you talked about at that time is today of course well recognized well accepted and uh, well implemented hmm. but you were there much before so so tell me something that in this entire area of especially celebrities right so they had this whole thing of taking shortcuts mm. it's well known about you know people wanting to have steroids and all kinds of plastic surgeries and things like that how did you deal with these situations because that is what the first thing is right i'll give you something very interesting or something very juicy <laughs> you know my no my nose is plastic surgeon <laughs> corrected you know how it happened Oh. In school, I had a big Parsi nose, like a Donald Duck. <laughs> no, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so I had a broad, I had a broad nose bridge, and because in school I used to dig my nose a lot, <laughs> I had nos, my nostrils were huge. <laughs> so I had a very keen desire to get my nose corrected. So once I was traveling from Andheri to Grand Tour in a local train, and it was a Saturday night. I very vividly remember. and i was just out of school just in college and people next to me were all plastic surgeon doctors and they were students discussing grafting cases <laughs> so i asked them that excuse me i had heard vaguely about plastic surgery i said do you do plastic surgery as yes i said can my nose be fixed he said india mein abhi tak hua nahi hai so i said but then they gave me a card and the surgeon's name was dr rustam davar frcs says ke we are in at uh, gt hospital gokuldas tejpal government hospital come tomorrow in the afternoon sir will be there he is parsi meet up with him <laughs> i to went there <laughs> so dr swami and said hi mickey how are you in gujarati and all that then he said so what do you want he saying obviously your nose is very awkward <laughs> so he saying mickey next week i was looking out for a model for somebody for nose correction for my team <laughs> so i said but i cannot pay anything because you know my <laughs> parents and i'm you know they were like middle class people yeah. he saying don't worry are you willing to stay in gt hospital <laughs> so i said gt hospital i said yeah same hospital he saying yeah but you'll have to stay in the ward where convicts are brought there for treatment <laughs> because burnt cases stab cases you know stabbing burnt and all broken bones i said theek hai bhai kar ji lenge kya farak padta hai so my dad mom allowed me and i got my nose surgered i was under local anesthesia five injections two in the corner of my eyes one on the top and two on the nostril god god and file file <laughs> hammer chisel everything before me is happening wow This is insane, man. Also, also one more, one more piece <laughs> of vanity. So you know, I somehow, somehow, some stunt director got in touch with me uh, through one of my cousins, and they said, "Okay, you are into karate. Can you do a duplicate for a heroine?" <laughs> Because <laughs> she's heroine. Yeah. I said, "Your stature." I said, "Okay." So there was a movie being made, "Ek Din Bahu Ka." Hmm. She, the, it was a South Indian heroine called Sapna. and suresh obrai's first movie as a hero so we were taken to taken to baroda and those days pedal pushers were in so heroine was wearing pedal pushers so they made me padded bra dupatta and everything mustache shaved off <laughs> and then when i went on the set are bhai heroine ke to pair pe baal hai so they made me wax 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 my legs completely 
धैन आई मैच सुरेश ओबेरॉय तो सुरेश ओबेरॉय से मिकी यार मुझे कराटे सिखा दे सो वेन आई केम टू बॉम्बे आई स्टार्टेड ट्रेनिंग हिम सो आई वॉज अ फर्स्ट पर्सनल ट्रेनर ऑफ इंडिया इन एटी टू एटी टू वेन द वर्ल्ड पर्सनल ट्रेनिंग डिट एक्सिस्ट एंड सो सो ही सर कितना लेगा आई सेट आई डोंट नो ही सेट चल आई गिव थ्री हंड्रेड रुपीज आफ्टर अ मंथ आई रियलाइज माई पेट्रोल बिल वॉज फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज Oh God! But with Suresh Oberoi, I taught Vivek Oberoi. He was knee high. Mm. With Vivek Oberoi, Prakash Mehra's children came and learned with me. Uh, Ramanan Sagar's children came and learned with me. And you know, so I got into that circle early, early back in those days. Mm. So first personal trainer of India, I I was the first columnist of wellness in India. With fitness in India. Oh no, you also did so many TV programs. I mean, you were. I mean, TV programs. The very first TV radio also Times FM Radio Midday. The first ever TV radio programs in fitness wellness done by me. First columnist. So, like I said, you are literally the institution, right? I mean, whatever is happening today in the world of health, fitness, yeah, etc., yeah. is happening. You were the yeah. sutradhar. of a lot of these things and we all have to immensely thank you for that what i really wanted to understand was that what if you had a magic wand and you could go back and change something you know in your life or in the society or in whatever you did like you just said one example was i wish i would have said yes to uh, yes chopra <laughs> for example yeah yeah, yeah. are there okay. any moments which you vividly remember which could have impacted very differently Hmm. I think in hindsight, my sense of business is very poor. My sense of marketing and branding is great. My sense of business is poor because I have a very sensitive and a very soft heart. I opened up very many centers and kept them running even as they were they were bleeding, because I hired too many trainers, and they were only bleeding because the cost of running a center was higher than what I was earning. Had I ran it in proper course, I would have made a lot. So personally, I made crores of rupees. You know, even as far as ten years back, I charge lakhs and lakhs of rupees a month, and almost a cool crore a year. And people paid because I delivered. I delivered philosophy. I delivered spirituality. I delivered nutrition. I delivered a massage. I delivered swimming. I delivered Buddhism, Jainism, everything. so i lost a lot of money i wish i had been a better businessman and i would have used the same money for better philanthropy than letting my centers bleed so i think if i could change we could have changed that but no regrets great learnings great learnings oh, so clearly on the business side clearly you you know like you say yourself said you could have done better and i think we are all learning right on the business side yeah, yeah, the yeah. only thing is that i think you wish you had not taken money from investors or vc investors look at <laughs> what is happening today right i mean let me tell you one thing <laughs> when harshad mehta's thing went on to the zenith alpic finance they approached me alpic is nothing but sipla overturned yeah okay so sipla people started something called alpic finance and alpic finance this office was in the same building my mother used to go for 35 40 years so they invited me to do an ipo for me just doing film swimming training and miss india's there was so much of fame so much of fame so there was radio tv miss india swimming articles and like mickey mehta had become a huge name after yukta mukhi winning mm. dina hayden winning and all that so they said we'll do an ipo i said okay i'm very happy so they said okay we'll have to borrow first initially take icds they were called inter corporate deposits we'll have to buy some land we'll have to put up a factory for garments you know your fitness garments we'll have to start a health farm we'll have to start organic farming then residential retreats and they started borrowing they made me sign papers and papers so, 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 so before we go there, right? I mean, I want yeah. to continue on the part of the gym business which you okay. said kept leading. Yeah. The reality is, and I don't know what is the truth. Hmm. It is said that the best way to become a millionaire is to become a billionaire and start a gym business. <laughs> I don't know of a single gym business. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there might be a small, and of course, we now know recently there have been lot of chains. We've got billions of dollars, and our jagah gym opened up, but. Somehow this big gym business does not work. It it does certainly. You know, I have not 
So what is the, and you have been there, you were the pioneer, you have seen everything, right? So what is your advice to people who are thinking of setting up gym businesses and what is your advice? If it is a standalone boutique gym, which you're going to be there and you're going to run it yourself and you're passionate about nutrition, passionate about workouts, if you're well qualified, you'll do very well. But if you want to start a chain of businesses, certainly not. Because all chains are folded up. Right from biggest chain of India, Talwalkars. I partnered with them. It, they folded up. Fitness first folded up. You know, when goals first came to India, Jaggi Walecha approached me. I had a meeting in West Side, the first West Side. He said, Mickey, you'll be my CEO. And you are the you, only you. I want only you as my CEO. So he, the salary he offered me was 40,000. And I was making around seven, eight, cool seven, eight lakhs very casually, even those days. I said, then he said, you have to stop everything what you're doing. <laughs> I said, it doesn't make sense. You give me 40,000, I stop making 8 lakhs. So, so the, the question is, so why? That's, my, that's what my question to you is, right? Because at one end, investors are coming in and even now, you know, there are people starting up chains, etc. Yeah. Why is this business so, why are people so enamored by this business when they keep, money keeps coming in? So, you know what happens that fitness business, uh, the gym business typically, either the people with uh, extra money, rich people and the son wants to do something. So they get into gym business and uh, like typically if you see Nitro Gym, Nitro, whatever you call. I mean, a rich politician has enough, but if he has to take bank loans and start that business, to service that kind of rent and to service that kind of interest on the lease of the equipment, it would not be viable. Initially also when Gold started at Napier Sea Road with 20,000 square feet, I was struggling to pay a rent it was insane. of... Yeah, it was insane. I was yeah. struggling to pay a 3 lakh rent. Anil Kapoor's wife, I was, you know, I had taken over their gym. Idea, the very first swanky gym of India. I took that over because they were making losses. I started making money even at 3 lakhs rupees rent. And people said, are you crazy? You shouldn't pay more than 1 lakh. But when many gyms happened, I started losing money. So, so I know, I know talking about Anil Kapoor. Yeah. You know, off late, he's been making a lot of news of his videos, doing all these fast runs <laughs> and his bare, he's a darling. And bare chest. He's a darling. Right? And he's almost your age, right? You are sim uh, similar ages now? Anil Kapoor is slightly senior, I think so. And I, my respect and regard is of the highest kind for him, for his kind of Anushasan, discipline. You know how in Mahabharat Amitabh says Anushasan. So Anushasan of the highest order. Self-discipline, Yama, Niyama, super. So what is that? You know, and again, in your case, right? I mean, you absolutely do not look like you are at 59 or 60. You look like somebody in your 30s. So what is the secret of your energy and your glow in your skin? And uh, I mean, clearly, right? I mean, people who are 50s or 55 or 60 listening to this show, please go see a video of Mickey or, you know, he's so gracious. Even if you contact him, he is going to respond to you. But we want to know the secret today. Right now, I think the secret sauce is uh, the word inspiration is in from within. I keep stirring my soul time and time again to better myself and better myself, not with the idea of competing with anyone, because I don't want to be pompous saying that where I am, I don't see competition. No, there is competition. I mean, there are new players like Luke Coutinho. Doing so well as an individual was a thorough professional, very profound the way. I mean, he started a revolution of social media marketing. And he did so well and respect to him. And at the same time, he's doing quality work. So great respect and regard to him. There are people like Pooja Makhija. Look at her. Then Yasmin. I mean, Yasmin almost started maybe 10 years after I started. 12, 13 years after I started. But look where she's gone. Very well. And of course, recent, recently we had PM Modi uh, interviewing, uh, you know. Milan Soman and etc. So look at Milan Soman. I mean, he's a great inspiration too. So I think Milan Soman is 55, I'm 59. But nevertheless, Milan Soman is a natural sportsman. He is not, he's, you know, barefoot running, running in the sun, working out on the beach. I mean, a great inspiration to me. So myself... I get inspired by my own self. I stir my soul regularly. I don't hold benchmarks as, as competitions, but 
I do get inspired by people. So yes, kinds of Bruce Lee inspired me a lot. The kinds of, you know, many Chuck Norris inspired me a lot. And Deepak Chopra. Now see, eventually intellect, intelligentsia in, inspires me more than anything else today. So today, you know, when I see the first, when I saw the first movie of this recent James Bond, I think the Solis, uh, what was that movie where he does parkour? He runs and with an African, he's chasing an African. Okay, it was the first James Bond movie. What's his name? I forgot here. Anyway. Yes, Bosman. No. No, no, no. no. The, I mean, the current, the current Bond guy who's just going to retire now. Yeah, even I'm, uh, anyway. even I'm forgetting his name. Yeah. So looking at his first movie and doing a chase, parkour chase, you know, I got inspired. Mm. So today I still do handstand push-ups. I can do 15, 20 pull-ups. I can do a tumble turn on a single bar and put my head down and legs up. I enjoy doing, back, you know, I'm trying to do now backflips and learn parkour and gymnastics. So I, I, is my self-inspiration is very important. And then people like, I mean, juniors, my Tiger Shroff inspires me. Seniors, my Akshay Kumar inspires me. And the guy who inspired me the most was Amir Khan. Wow. Amir Khan is, you know, so because while I was training with him for almost 40 days, and the guy's discipline and when he's into something, he's into something. He's the most curious and intrigued student one can ever have who will trigger the flows of your learning too. So such people inspire me. So Mah Maharishi Mahesh Yogi Ji, BKS Iyengar. So once I had gone for BKS Iyengar's uh, uh, conference in 1989, I remember it was in Taj. He was an octogenarian. And he in that conference says that last week I came back from Haridwar and I did barefoot running up and down. Wow. So these things keep reminded me of the Anil Kapoor is an inspiration to me. Wow. Bachanji is an inspiration that at such an age, he still wakes up at five o'clock. He goes to his gym, he works out, whatever he does, but he does. And, and uh, I know you've also been involved in training the police forces and ministers. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I still train the police. Yeah. So what is the, or, you know, why is the police, you know, there, you know, even during the lockdown police came up as one of the most stressed and there were a lot of infections there. Yeah. So what are you seeing the challenges with police and all these government departments right now with health? The biggest challenge with the police force is that they are absolutely overworked. An average constable clocks in almost uh, 16 hours from doorstep to doorstep. 16 hours? From the, time he, from the time he leaves home, goes to work and comes back. Wow. It is exactly 16 hours. So he barely gets... Eight hours at home in which he has to have his dinner, spend time with family, wake up in the morning, have his breakfast, take his bath, shave and come back. So he gets an average sleep of six hours. Yesterday I was with the Joint Commissioner Law and Order, uh, giving him a consultation. His, his name is Mr. Vishwas Nagre Patil. Mr. Vishwas Patil, we know really well. He was part of the Nasik police. Yeah. Correct. So great friend of mine for the last uh, many years. So he told me my average sleep is six hours. I said, that's no, that's no new news to me. So I have embraced Ayurveda big time. So since the last 15 years, I live Ayurveda. So the treatments of Ayurveda, right from Abhyangam, which takes care of your marma points, mm -hmm. uh, to Nasyam, which takes care of influencing and stimulating your neuron, neural firing and synaptic connections and I've been I've been the Dhirubhai Ambani of the industry. I've not gone to a business school. And where did, where did you learn all these yoga? Where is your yoga learning came from? So I did all my learning. So I'm the biggest unqualified fitness wellness guy <laughs> ever with a double honorary wow. doctorate. I don't know for what. And somebody, it's a very big university in Chennai called the Jain University. They are going, they are going to start courses in Ayurveda. Wow. So Mr. Jain, when once he took my interview online hmm. for an hour and a half, he said, Mickey, next year I'm giving you an honorary doctorate once again. I said, no, I'm thank you. I'm so humble. You've already got enough doctorates, right? I got two, 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 two. But I don't flash them around so much. Don't flaunt them around so much because you know how people are. So, you know, there was one journalist from Delhi. She suddenly one day picked up the phone and said, which doctor you are? I said, madam, I'm not a doctor of medicine. I'm simply, you know, somebody said, we want to give it to you. They took me through the processes of interviews. And I did around 20 hours of interviews 
to get one to particular doctorate and the second doctorate I got after 30 hours of interviews. And they conferred. So, so tell me something, uh, you know, of course, we know Ruchita Divekar, she's been talking a lot about local foods and ghee and turmeric and regional and seasonal. What has been your your whole theory around uh, around this whole food specially uh, and the super foods which we talk about? Okay, so let me tell you that, uh, first of all, that before nutrition, first of all, diet is passe, nutrition is in. And food can be your medicine. You know, this is what I always tell everybody. And the father of medicine, Dr. Hippocrates said, thy food, let thy food be thy medicine. Now, before you eat anything, there are things that you consume, they become your medicine first. They nourish you before your food nourishes you. So cosmic nutrition. So Pancha Mahabhuta, Tattva. Tattva is a sattva. So sattva guns come, guna comes from sattva and your sanskaras come from your gunas and your gunas come from your tattvas, once again. So pancha mahabhutas, so air, water, fire, ether, earth. Uh, so sun nourishes you, light nourishes you, sunlight. Fresh air nourishes you, akasha, ether nourishes you. Uh, vyayama, dhyana, pranayama nourishes you. A good night's sleep, meaningful rest nourishes you. Then a good massage nourishes you. A good hug with limbic resonance nourishes you because your heart flutters. Clapping nourishes you because there are happy hormones, you know, secreting inside. Charity nourishes you because your heart flows better when you see a smile of gratification on somebody's face. Uh, then, of course, then maybe then food comes at number 10, 11. So now when it comes to food, first of all, as raw, as real, as natural, regional, seasonal. Ethical, sensible, and intelligent choices of food. Not processed, not preserved, not colored. Mm. And food, and if the rule of the thumb says, which means whatever I learned, which are the constants even today. These are the constants. So, eat 50% raw for above average health. Eat 70% raw for excellent health. And then what is your whole, you know, this veganism is suddenly everybody is talking about veganism, which is, you know, like to the other extreme. Yeah. What are your thoughts around these extreme fads like veganism, keto, you know, these are again things which you keep hearing around, right? Yeah. So, and of course, you being the, the, the Dhirubhai Ambani of this industry, <laughs> I had to bring up these words. So keto se majito. Because keto is, it is hazardous. People say there are a lot of flip sides and scientifically... There have been renal failures and malfunctions with, you know, many other organs. So it is, it is hazardous. Okay, just don't do it for weight loss. It is not a healthy way of losing weight. When you lose weight, you should not lose health. You lose weight, you gain health. This should be, it should be like this. So Ayurveda says that, you know, postic ahar mein che rasayan hone chahiye. Che rasayan. Madhur. Mitha. Mm. Khatta. Ambat, tangy, then kharas, they're salt. Okay, then astringent, bitter, and pungent. Mm. So literal and real nutrition lies in fulfilling the six tastes for your prakruti. And this six tastes coming from natural sources, not made in laboratories. So when these six tastes nourish you completely and when you eat submaximal, which means leave 25% space in your stomach bag, to ahar postik hota hai. Wow. So, ahar postik hota hai, to vihar santulit hota hai. Means your physical activity. Jab vihar santulit hota hai, to vishram meaningful hota hai. Mm. Deep meaningful rest. Or tab jake rasa, rakta, mausha, meda, ashti, maja, shukra. All these six tastes nourish. Your rasa rakta, rasa means rasayans. Rakta nourishes your blood, that becomes blood. Mausha means your muscles, then your adipose tissue, then your bones, bone marrow, then your nerves. And then your shukra, that means the overall urja prana that becomes your light which emanates out of you. Mm. So I think so this philosophy, what you just talked yeah, about, yeah. right? It sounds very simple, but Practically, how does one follow all this? So it, it is it is very simple. I'll tell you why. Because self-discipline is 
very important and self love is very important and take baby steps so first of all if you are eating a lot of meat start tapering it by the rule of the thumb don't eat meat in the night because in the night even amruta becomes amavish mm that's the understanding because see you must know that breakfast like a king is the biggest disaster for human health <laughs> 40 50 years down the line your organs begin to fail and malfunction so your morning is vat your afternoon is pittakal and then it's kafakal mm. so pittakal is your golden period of digestion 10 to 2 mm. and in that also the zenith of pittakal is 12 to 1 at that time even if you have wish it will become amrut because your body's capacity to absorb assimilate and eliminate is at the crescendo so 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 it's amazing right that a lot of these philosophies come back to us with this western twist like intermittent fasting concept is this autophagy intermittent fasting is autophagy so, so hamare ya life mein log ye fasting is like the every is the whole foundation of everything in india absolutely it allowing the body space to recover rejuvenation of cells organs and your body consumes the toxins you know in you know in modern science where there is absolute resistance post surgeries etc to antibiotics modern science has started taking feces purifying them and injecting now this it's called it's called uh, it's called fecal transplant yes <laughs> yes this was being done this was this is being done by ayurved long long back kings used to do that kings also used to suck out you know blood letting used to happen they used to put leeches le- leeches on your body suck out blood now blood letting is very healthy because your body when your body expels or dispels blood your body churns into action to make new blood also prp plate plate i think platement uh, platelets replacement plasma injectables by hollywood people are doing that so the new th- word which i heard again because you know i follow this whole western science and they talk about all these things so they suddenly started talking about grounding yeah, earthing 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 i was like what the hell is earthing bau nange pair chalo grass pe bola yaar ye to matlab yog yog is earthing so typically the science of earthing is thus i have done some research on it so uh, your gravity is working on you so the forces of entropy kill you because they bring you in disorder this is and they give you death otherwise a human is eternal he can live eternally i have understood the science i have studied the science of santhara ichha mrityu so once again once again so you are saying that a human can be eternal. living eternally yeah. you are yeah. not going i can die. explain the science to you so this is the science of ichha bhishma pitamaha ichha mrityu ichha jeevan yeah. and in jainism it is called santhara and pythagoras 6000 years before christ had come to india he learned santhara and he spoke about genosophy he spoke about eternity the first time the greek philosophy ever referred to eternity was after learning the jain philosophy so nevertheless so all ayurveda principles today are getting validated so now today in mayo clinic so sloan's clinic people are giving med- medicine through the back side because the bio availability of the medicine becomes 90% mm. if you take it from top it is destroyed 80% and only 20% bio availability is there because your acid juice is destroyed mm. so i mean world is going a full circle full circle you know india was the first one to tell the scientific community about macrophage ma- macrophages in our immunity mm. so you know the t cells and b cells laughter therapy in yoga hasya the world brought it in only 40 years back but in 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 our sanatan dharma and in patanjali sutras in you know there are references to laughter your diaphragm moves 12 to 13 cm and your thymus is stimulated your bone marrow is stimulated and they secrete immunoglobulins mm. which otherwise today are used for uh, interferons and interleukin 2 for 5000 dollars and 7000 dollars a while which your body gets it free mm. by just laughing ha, 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 ha. exactly emptying your five lung lo- uh, five five lobes of your lungs filling them with oxygen uh, stimulating your respiratory tract uh, draining your adenoids dilating your sinusitis it happens as a full biomechanical activity 
So no, you you are really an encyclopedia on health, right? I mean, I can go into any any topic, but personally, in your what is your favorite area of health between all these various things you talk about? Meditation. Hmm. Well, yeah. So dissolving. Meditation is dissolving. So how, how how long do you meditate, or how much do you meditate? I don't know. What, what is the way to measure it? So not long hours though, but qualitative time, because actually meditation is becoming timeless. Hmm. Because when you are meditating, you are in the center. The time only moves on the circumference, not in the center. Mm. So, in a meditative frame of mind, you are timeless. Because kal, kal means time, kal means history, and kal also means death in Sanskrit. See how deep, profound Sanskrit is. So, for somebody who is an absolute beginner who has never done meditation before, how can they start meditation? So. as i said meditation is being not doing so simply stop doing whatever you are doing that's number 1 number 2 shut your eyes because our five senses five horses pull us in various directions and our five perceptions give us very different contradictory feeds and whatever we make out of there is always a conflict between the mind and the heart so we are subjected to duality constantly so we are scattered we are staggered so meditation you shut your eyes first of all you stop doing start being shut your eyes because eyes are the theater eyes create deeper perceptions once 80% of the feed is cut off the rest 20% is touch taste smell so eyes are 80% and 80% of energy expenditure is through eyes which is why you get tired because you are awake all day your body doesn't get tired your eyes get tired and because of that you fall asleep So close your eyes, stop doing work, and then 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 the most beautiful part that you are not breathing. So you watch as to when the body takes in air, and you watch when the body releases air. And as that happens, your mind gut access awareness should be there. So on the tip of your nose, the air going in, air coming out, and on your belly. the wave of the belly up and down happening in japanese it is called tanden breathing mm. the word tandem comes from tanden the comes from tando which means rhythm mm. and rhythm is primary responsible for wellness so once that rhythm is established mind gut access is established now once the mind gut access is established and if you are sitting in padmasana sukhasana or siddhasana asana posture in poetry and a seat or seed of awareness where you are drashta in drashta bhav you are watching in observation there is absorption where the sight transcends into a vision mm. then what happens the gra- gravity gets neutralized because yoga is about let go and let it be let go and let it be so let go is breath going out and let it be is the curd karma dahi jama lo thoda sa dahi le lo itna doodh le lo and leave it if every hour for the next 12 hours if you would put a spoon inside to stir it dahi kabhi nahi jamega mm you have to leave it yeah so my my fourth book is curd karma ah let it go and let it be let it be for things to get reoriented resynchronized restored order coming back so meditation so gravity loses its grip gets neutralizes when you're completely relaxed when you are in the state of constriction gravity draws you mm. when you are in the state of resistance gravity draws you when you are divided in duality gravity draws on you but when you are in the shunyam quotient gravity dissolves and you know j- just to talk about this right yeah that today what has happened is technology hmm. is forcing you to act now yeah. i send you a whatsapp me ko abhi reply chahiye maine aapko ha. mail kiya are mail ka reply kyun nahi aaya so people are expecting like instant response you know i have called you tell me something now and i have decided you know for example in the night i don't even keep my phone with me so if you call me after 9 o'clock they will know there is no chance of you getting a response because my phone is also not with me right salute salute so, so the bottom line is that in this world of instant karma let's put it that way yeah how do you put this 
you know the dahi zamana concept which you said right that let it be yeah because people <laughs> don't want you to be everybody wants to keep sending you a message yeah, yeah. and keep calling you and keep sending you a push notification so what happens so what typically happens in letting be so when you're sitting in sukhasan and i said in shunyam question the gravity is neutralized then what happens urdhagaman happens which means the energy of earth which enables a sprout to break the crust of the earth and sprout that energy is available to you so which otherwise you are being drawn down turns around your kund turns around and elevation of awareness happens mm. so in yoga in yoga where there is confluence of energies confluence as in what i would say yin yang ida pingla chandra surya shiva shakti when two energies come and meet at a point ganga yamuna when they meet at prayag saraswati is born so a new entity is born out of yoga and yoga is only possible when you are sitting in any posture from discomfort to comfort arrives tolerance arrives patience happens resilience tenacity so yoga brings this in modern day if you practice yoga you will become tolerant you will become patient so so tell me something what role does destiny play in health because a lot of people say are diabetes to mere family mein hai you know ye bhi mere family mein hai you know lot of times people or you know destiny becomes like oh this is destined to happen uh and especially in health i have heard this so many times that people's most common thing is that yeah i'm going to get bp i'm going to get heart disease because it was there okay and they think that that's their destiny so couple of things couple of things on destiny so my first line on destiny i had written once in my morning mickey mouse messages that destiny is an open phenomena destiny is dynamic and open it is not predetermined now one more thing we have two legs to walk towards destiny hands to make our destiny eyes to see our destiny minds to perceive our destiny heart to believe our destiny and a soul to achieve our destiny that's number one rigveda says you are what your deepest desires are as are your desires so will be your will as will be your will so will be your intentions as will be your intentions so will be your deeds and as will be your deeds so will be your destiny सचेतन भाव से दृष्टा भाव से आप जो भी बीज बोगे तो धतुरे का बीज बोगे तो धतुरा पाओगे गुलाब का बीज बोगे तो गुलाब की उपलब्धि होगी और उसके साथ साथ सुगंध की उपलब्धि भी होगी खूबसूरती और उसके साथ साथ आपको थॉर्न भी मिलेंगे हाँ तो दैट इज बिकॉज लाइफ हैज पैराडॉक्स सो डेस्टिनी इज नॉट डेफिनेट इफ यू आर बॉर्न विथ डायबिटीज you can change it because now quantum physics says in determinism uncertainty is a way of life werner heisenberg said quantum physics it toppled down the complete world view of science the theory of relativity was completely crashed now they are trying to reconcile the holy grail so theory of relativity uh, relativity that is the theory of the macro with the theory of quantum physics the theory of the micro so uncertainty so destiny is uncertain and whatever genes you are born with 95% of your genes are indeterministic this is what epigenetics tells you so what do you think the role of luck is because people then say are luck nahi tha you know luck people preparedness keep... preparedness meeting opportunities khud ko kar buland itna ke upar wala har bande se puche ke bata bande teri raza kya hai तकदीर लिखने से पहले सो लक इज नथिंग बट एवरी थिंग दैट यू अर्न अर्लियर एंड यू आर रिवॉर्डेड लेटर सो इफ यू आर रिवॉर्डेड लेटर यू विल बी अर्निंग इन कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट प्रोबेबली दैट विच यूल कॉल लक बट इफ यू आर पनिश लेटर दैट टू कैन बी कंपाउंडेड सो आई रिटर्न अ थियोरी ऑफ कर्मा फ्रॉम यूएसए टू बर्मा योर बॉस इज कर्मा from usa to burma your boss is karma if karma goes for a toss your life is at a loss even christ had to carry his own cross mm wow so so karma is really all about what you do and what you get yeah. so what do you think of as we say reincarnation 
if hmm. you are going to live forever yeah. and technically you die but you come back so you are playing this game again and again yeah, yeah. and again so what do you what are your thoughts around that so rick as we say the change is happening in the ignorant without their wanting it the change is happening in the wise the way they want it so if change is constant be the choreographer of your own change that's number one if you are living become so conscious you are extremely conscious in your last breath also i will not use the word death because death comes to disease and disease comes to the ignorant disease will never come to the enlightened one mm. they will exit they will stop eating stop drinking and then they will choose when they want to stop breathing breathing and when they transit transform transmigrate reform it's not death so when they exit they will either choose to become the fragrance of a flower sweetness of a fruit strength of any root or they will dissolve, dissolve into the cosmos and be a witness to the whole thing they will choose consciously so otherwise people will be born accidentally here and there time and time again you know the sambhog for to bring the likes of christ krishna mohammed mahadev zarathustra zora the buddha people used to do it at a particular time particular season particular people particular gotras particular uh, matching of i would say your astrological charts and in deep love when sex becomes love love becomes a prayer and prayer becomes a worship a christ is born a krishna is born mm. otherwise a drunkard will be born a drug abuse wala will be born a psychopath will be born a sociopath will be born so, so, a temporary that's what i'm asking ah, you right so you are then saying that destiny that, that then that's the role of a destiny you are saying that if that is the case you can choose you be the choreographer of your destiny choose your partner be in the flow go with the rhythm of the cosmos look into the wisdom of the planetary situations and the harmony in the planets for you to get into copulation making love make it worship attract the best soul you know the point is you say all these amazing things but finally customer aapko puchega ki meko bata how do i lose 5 kg weight correct <laughs> what is your message to all these people who are there to try and you know that's what i see everybody finally goes and says all this is sir tell me how do i lose 5 kg weight or 10 kg weight that's the common question how do you so fortunately fortunately uh i i have very very few weight loss clients when i do personal consulting which i do lots of it now then covid has given me great opportunities so did almost 200 webinars for at least 20 corporates and at least 100 consulting i did in you know and those are regular so my consultations come with grade 4 cancer where doctors say not more than 3 months we give we make them live longer but i work with oncos i work with chemo therapists i work with doctors and i work with ayurveda doctors mm. and we team up together then ms paralysis asthma and all kind of autoimmune diseases so this is what i do the most most challenging cases octogenarians who can who can barely sit i've made them walk and walk 10 kilometers every day now so tell me when you meet other people who are your age yeah you know who are definitely at a very different stage in their health yeah what kind of message do you give them can they change themselves now already they have diabetes cholesterol hypertension dunia i mean so 30 30 years back when i was almost 30 they used to write me off they used to laugh at me but today when i talk and i look like this they are beginning to make those small changes in their lives uh, my school schoolmates who were 15 years younger to me are looking 15 years older to me mm. i am meeting so many actresses who they say we learn swimming with you in sea princess we learn swimming with you in holiday <laughs> i said okay thank you so there is one there's a lady very beautiful lady actress ka aarti chhabria and you know so she told me once are mickey sir how are you I said, "How you are a lovely actress. I liked you in Avara Pagal Divana." But she said, "But you forgot. I learned swimming with you." I said, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> Amazing. That's going to be quite. A, I think clearly 
you have big plans going forward because you are still in your 30s as i say right absolutely so the question the question for you is that you are certainly one of those people who practice a lot of these things you know what you are saying hmm. which of course mean that you are going to live for much longer 100 to kahin nahi gaya so tell me what will you do when you are going to be at the age of 100 what have you visualized yourself because you keep talking about visualization yeah so what is your visualization at the age of 100 so very many very many astrologers had to have told me that you have a yog of being a sadhu saint you know although i still love my armanis i still love my yoga boss i still my, i still love you know a uh, todds i still love my rolexes of the world but never i don't know but yes certainly an ashram certainly a health farm that kind of a setup that kind of a setup i mean this would be where i belong because people coming there uplifting transforming transcending transmigrating and tell me something you know of course it's you know since you're going to be there for a much longer time it's too early to ask you will also be there of course i you also will be no, there i am of course going to be there you know clearly uh, one of my goals yeah, yeah. is not only to live over 100 but maybe start running a marathon or run a marathon at that age right and i think that's a problem right everybody has accepted this destiny that i am going to get diabetes hmm. i am going to get heart disease i am going to get whatever hip replacement so i think the problem is that everybody is going through that old mind process while you and i are saying that no you can change it and it's very much in your hand and it can be done naturally you don't need to have expensive medicines and replacement of body parts right i think that's really not the case have you seen para olympics para olympians can have you seen their swimming their short part and what all what all they do we should learn we should learn that life happens in the spiritual world only physicalities don't limit you so talking about the spiritual world while there are no coincidences i always kind of imagine that what is it special about your own birth date you know you started learning karate on that birthday or you started doing yoga on that day and of course yoga yeah 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 that was coincidental could be preordained i don't know and you know when modi ji had to announce fit india <laughs> it was on your birthday i completely we had a cake cutting for you so i'm just saying so do you yeah, see yeah, this yeah. pattern repeating i've heard that uh, prophet mohammed was born on 29th august also michael jackson was born on 29th august <laughs> so could be so there is okay my understanding of the algorithm of life is such life in the material plane life on the material plane is math but life before material plane and after material plane is beyond math so there is a pattern in the material world but before the material world before it manifests into a math pattern sacred geometries congruence of sacred geometries life is open ended but from this point and the next moment the life is open ended too because i choose to change my math and change my theorems and change my formulas my formulae amazing so what we are going to do miki is before we continue i know we have a little more time left let's take a bio break <laughs> i think uh, we have, we've been talking for almost one and a half hours so let's take a break perfect perfect Hello everybody, welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you aren't following us on social media, it's 2021 now, it's time you did. You didn't in 2020, that was bad enough, but now in 2021, you really, really should. It's IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And a quick reminder to everybody, just please help us out with our survey, ivmpodcast.com slash survey. We've had a number of you fill it out so far, but we want to shatter last year's number, right? Really, really blow that up. Go fill out the survey over there. If you do, we'll select from the emails that we have got submitted, and we'll be sending out some interesting swag to people. So what should you be listening to this week? First thing I want to talk about is the unprecedented episode. We did a triple crossover. Vineet Kanobar from Storytellers and Storytellers, Varun Dugirala from Advertising is Dead, and Karthik Nagarajan from the filter coffee podcast all got together and put together a mega episode do check it out on whichever of their feeds you want is available on all three 
And because it's the new year, let me recommend a few things just to make your life a little better. We have a number of shows which work on self-actualization and really helping people kind of get in touch with themselves and live their lives better. So do check out Begin the Journey by Ashish Vidyarthi, The Positivity Podcast with Chetna Chakravarti, and The Habit Coach with Ashton Doctor. Do check out all three of these shows, especially New Year's where you're looking at ways to kind of keep your resolutions. They will help. And with that, let me get you back to your show. So welcome back from this break on the Vishal Gondal show. Uh, we are continuing our amazing conversation with Dr. Miki Mehta. We've spoken about a lot of things. I mean, right from philosophy to karma to yoga and the amazing journey of this great karma yogi. Uh, but before I let him go, there were, there were a few things I wanted to get your perspective on. And especially during the time of coronavirus. Uh, what is your view of pandemic and what has been your theory? I know you've been talking a lot about uh, this whole virus and what is happening. Uh, what has been your uh, idea behind the virus and how people are dealing with it? So Louis Pasteur on his deathbed made a very honest, humble confession. He's saying that I wasted my life chasing the microbes. I should have looked into human terrain. Because human terrain is marvelous, magical. It is capable. Now, if you see that there is 14 billion years of history of human life. Also, we've evolved across 14 billion years. Now, so now there are various th theories. So there is a theory of panspermia, which says that we came as a life on a meteorite and came onto this earth. Okay. There's another theory which says that we were found on the rim of a volcano as a chemical called chemolithoautotrophic hyperthermophile, which has now become a thinking, conscious, analytical, feeling, musical, rhythmic, understanding, well-perceived human being who can digest food, play a piano, think a thought, have perspectives, have perceptions, write a poetry, make a painting, be a potter, be a sculptor can cry, laugh, make cry, laugh, a very superior human being. So we have evolved. Now in this evolution, we have gone through many diseases, viruses, germs and bacteria. As we speak, the biologists say that there are 60,000 bacteria, germs and viruses in the environment now between us. Now there is one more philosophy and a science combo, which is phylogeny. Phylogeny says that human beings have a memory of their own species from the time they were probably orangutans to the missing link to what we are today. So we must have encountered innumerable viruses and bacteria and our body knows how to respond or react. That's number one. What is the lifespan of coronavirus? 14 days. What is the evolution of coronavirus? Zero. The evolution of mankind? 14 billion mm. years. Man is capable on the ladder of evolution of rising above gods or falling below animals. So peak immunity can make you rise above gods because purity. Peak immunity comes out of purity, out of integrity, out of shuddhikaran, out of cleansing, out of regulating, out of fortifying, and it can make you a god. You and me are gods in seed form. And do gods ever get scared of Corona? They say, right, that everybody is nobody but Krishna. We are all... yeah, Or a Christ, yeah. or a Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mean, so, yeah, divinity is... Divinity is a phenomenon. So, divinity is not in personalities. It is in the principles. So, there are principles of divinity and the Christ, Krishna, Muhammad, Mahadev, they were humans like you and me who rose on the ladder of evolution and got higher than gods. So if we keep rising on the ladder of evolution, what is Corona? Once, once at four years of age, a British general left his maid and a son at home to go for an overnight party on Saturday, trusting the maid. The maid had to meet her boyfriend on the beach, which was touching the home. She took that boy, his name was Trafalgar, boy to the beach, playing with the boy, she swayed away for a few hours at three in the night. 
she came back at 6 and the boy was still playing and the maid was very sorry and asked so sorry weren't you scared didn't you feel fear and the boy smiled and asked what is fear mm. so what is covid so it's a i mean okay it's a aggressive strand of uh, infection but if we choose to become vulnerable host or susceptible host to it it's fine otherwise i i created a scientific breathing pattern for the first time in the world called poison b in the corona times prevention of infection seeding optimal nasal breathing poison b prevention of infection seeding optimal nasal breathing so the breathing is that the initial breathing is like a dog it's very clavicle so it is so you do 20 30 and then you so you do 15 15 of these again you do and again you do slow so you hyperventilate and then you do slow yeah yeah so the reason being so when you hyperventilate you empty your five lobes of lungs you refill your five lobes of lungs you stimulate your thymus gland you stimulate your adenoids to drain bacteria viruses you dilate your sinusitis you elevate the body temperature your respiratory tract is completely empty your diaphragm moves the full circle up and down vertically so your t cells b cells are completely active so your first two defense mechanisms to any virus and bacteria are 100% optimally working there you go this is one good way of dealing with it one good way so miki you must have met thousands of clients or people who must have come to you with all kinds of problems is there anything common you have found between all these people which you see that or common traits which you know this is one thing which i have seen mental depression so my program in the pandemic called mind is medicine i did some 50 runs of it with different clients but each time i was different though so depression mental illness emotionally unsettled people suicidal people i'm opening up to you so you know in the last 25 years i've been dealing with suicidal people i work with couple of psychiatrists so i help people wean off the psychiatric medicines and i help people indulge with elements so i use breath as medicine i use sunshine sunshine as medicine sleep as medicine then nasyam virachan abhyangam i would say vaman music 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 music's visuals chirping of the birds primordial sounds and you know japa tapa dhyana pranayama so mental illness has been the biggest problem the biggest problem is that the family pushes us to them to us but those people don't accept it and dealing with that and then there are food disorders then there are sleep disorders then there are activity disorders then there are mood disorders then there are temperamental disorders and everything is in disorder so this has been the biggest challenge that i you know in the last 2 years forget pandemic since the last 2 years i have been working with drug abuse then i am working with i do couple relationship management i do children father so with for very many super rich people i do siblings management and parental and child management mm-hmm. and guru shishya management i do for some ib schools so i've been i've been working in the mental and emotional area a lot i use ayurveda as a principle not only herbs but ayurveda as a principle where i understand that the state of this is is seeded in the subconscious and the manifestation is in the body mm. so so pida ka janam prakruti mein hai and in aapke vyaktitva roop mein hai and then to usko rupantrit karna is very very important also very very important you know we we almost forgotten our natural prakruti so manushya wo jo man ka mara purusha wo jo purak hota hai purak jo purush और पूरक पुरुष पुरुष उत्तम पुरुष उत्तम पुरुष उत्तम राम इट इज पुरुष उत्तम हैज बिकम पुरुष उत्तम राम रामा को उल्टा करेंगे तो अमर होता है सो द धारा सो वी आर इन द कॉन्स्टेंट फ्लो ऑफ एनर्जीज एंड एक्सचेंज ऑफ एनर्जीज विच पंच महाभूत विद द तत्व सो तत्व से सत्व सो सात्विक जीवन के लिए सात्विक भोजन सात्विक एटीट्यूड सात्विक कार्य कर्म 
सो धारा बन के जो अंदर से बाहर निकलती है वो राधा बन के फिर से अंदर आती है और फिर राधा बन के अंदर से जो बाहर निकलती है वो धारा बन के लौट आती है सो वी आर इन द कॉन्स्टेंट एक्सचेंज ऑफ एनर्जीज वेर योर यूनिट रिदम इज सिंक्रोनाइज विदमिक रिदम सो वॉट इज योर हाउ डू यू एक्सप्लेन दिस टू यू नो बिकॉज वी डील विद लॉट एंड नो वी वर लुकिंग टू लॉन्च इन दूएस सो दे वॉन्ट टू नो एवरी थिंग का साइंटिफिक एक्सपेरिमेंट बताओ इसका साइटेशन दो और इसका हम बताएंगे हम है ना भाई हम है भाई सो वॉट ऑल दीज थिंग्स यूर टॉकिंग विच आर अमेजिंग बट यू नो वेन पीपल चैलेंज यू नो द साइंटिफिक एविडेंस अराउंड इट वॉट वॉट डू यू टेल दैम सो सो ओके सो लेट मी अंडरस्टैंड दैट एटम okay so when you go below atom it is subatomic particles and in subatomic particles when you go below that then there are photons mesons bosons and they are they are nothing but fluctuation of energy in the magnetic field and this fluctuation of energy is unstable and uncertain and stability comes with meditation intention comes with meditation transformation so when you put intention when you put attention to the field you energize it when you put intention to the field you transform it you make these science philosophies available to you to transform your life so whether it is food or exercise i can explain all transformations scientifically may it be brain plasticity may it be neuroplasticity may it be epigenetics may it be transgenerational epigenetic research which means i'll explain to you you're going to get married so this is which, which i which i do with couples so 3 years before they get married or 2 years or 1 year before they get married they come to me for the complete change of mindset and behavioral science so their offspring will not carry forward the same defective genes so trans generational epigenetic reset but how can you reset your genes the whole idea of a gene is you can't reset the gene change of behavior change of food change of environment change of thought process change of attitude affirmations visualizations meditation so meditation always takes you in a quantum leap also because this continuity is very important for quantum leaps why people ask for space why people say i'll sleep it over why in english there is an idiom called let the penny drop mm. let the nickel drop for realizations so the biggest transformation jo jisko hindi mein bolte na chhalang lagana kranti ghatti hai ek kranti ghatti hai hum rupantrit hote hain instant transformation sometimes so in this material world you know where everybody is yeah. you know going after money fame you know or some kind of you know this whole concept whatever you are explaining it, it's very difficult for somebody to adopt this right because uh, in this materialistic world all these may or may not work you can start simply you know simple food early sleeping disciplined yoga disciplined pranayama dhyan prarthana that's the whole the whole challenge is so you know one of the research which we did at goki is the biggest challenge huh. or the biggest competition to goki is not any other gym or health app it is laziness inertia huh. and then there are all these other enticement you know zomato is telling you 50% off on burger koi aapko bol raha hai netflix mein aaj raat bhar picture dekho huh. you know yeah, yeah. there is so much enticement to you just how you know uh, the the rishis were enticed by menka you know who was trying to bhang their meditation today your mobile phone every second is buzzing and enticing you to stop focusing on your work so the wheel which we call sansara sansar is a wheel of life so sansar and seduction go together because while you're moving you are moving and you are getting seduced you are moving and you are getting seduced when you are centered vairagya comes in detachment comes in so when we teach people like when i do my workshops with corporates i teach them vairagya very simply i t go make them go through the processes of imagination drooling and then understanding assessing and evaluating that is this what really they are looking out for in life and that is the time it's very easy to let go so we metabolize the whole process of desires and detachment so i tell people that pursue your purpose and the universal the and the universe will fulfill your dreams so self realization of purpose so this is for people who are achievers and i work with achievers i don't work with people who want to lose 5 kilos and 10 kilos But i yeah, very rarely that's the whole problem right see the achiever is already something yeah. who is on the path So, you know helping somebody who is on yeah. the path i mean it's good 
But the real problem is that there are all these people who are depressed and who are non-achievers and who think they are nobody. And you know, the real problem or the masses are there. Right. So what can we do? What can you do with your immense knowledge to help the masses? So well, with whatever videos I'm making, with whatever writing I'm doing, with whatever uh, workshops that I'm doing, whatever whatever books that I'm writing, this is my small contribution. Well, if I would have a platform like Goki, I would reach out to millions. So maybe it's time we can make, maybe maybe we can start some series of transformational things and reach out to foreign audiences. Hmm. Let's do that because there is enough material available in India for people to do. But for people, for people, these things which are new, which could be explained to them, the Eastern or I would say the ancient wisdom traditions taught in scientific parlance, we can create that kind of a, a channel and work towards it, which will be a combination of do along mm. and also a combination of homework and combination of people logging in and writing back and what are they doing on a weekly basis with a graph for evaluation and assessment. We can do such a thing to reach masses. Well, you you know that I'm there on Tata Sky, I'm on Hotstar, and I'm also on uh, Airtel DTH. So I think I have my reach of some millions here and there. But if we create a focused program for focused audiences, maybe we can work together. What I'm saying, Mickey, is that what you are saying is not about... I mean, this needs to be transmitted on every channel, every movie, every set-top box, every phone to every person, the 7.2 billion people in the world. Everybody needs to hear you. Yeah. You know, it is not about Goki or, you know, some news channel. So, so it can start somewhere with some focus channel, which can then become a force multiplier, no? See, because Vishal, I see you, recognize you. You've seen the movie Avatar. Yeah. So as I am one avatar of wellness, I see you as an avatar of wellness and a promoter, propagator. Also, there's a dialogue in this movie avatar called I See You. Mm. And the way you've done things and the way you got Akshay in and the way you're doing things and the way you will probably do things, I don't know your blueprint, but I'm sure you're on the path of evolution and opening up to more audiences and getting them to join your revolution. So some channels are probably pre-designated. And yes, through my, as I do through other channels, we could do things together. Maybe, see, you are a great guy when it comes to how to become a force multiplier. So maybe our strengths come together and maybe we can do some wonders for mankind. My whole thing is how do we awaken a man who's asleep? That's the point, right? When you said <laughs> mankind, I'm saying not about... 70 million or 7 million. I said 7.2 billion people is what I started by saying. Let, let's let's start somewhere. Let's make it multilingual. Let's start somewhere. Let's do let's do road shows. We can do so many things. I'm up and I'm completely available to this world always. So Mickey, you are not a person. You are an idea. Yeah. And my I, my concept and the thought of actually getting you on this podcast hmm. was to start spreading this idea called Mickey. Because people currently think of Mickey as this person who is not reachable, who only yeah, stars yeah. can talk to and who yeah, only yeah. Miss Indias are running after. Hmm. But an idea can be accessed by anybody. You could be the poorest of poor and the richest of rich. Hmm. Idea can come to anybody. And that same idea can be utilized. So I think the question really is, how do we take you as an idea out there? And you know that's mm-hmm. really the challenge which we all have. And you know what? The best part is since we are all the travelers on the same journey, mm-hmm. the idea will show us itself. Absolutely. It will reveal the idea will reveal itself, which is the which is the amazing part, right? I mean, that's that's really what it is. So, but before we end, I just wanted two, three other interesting points from you. On books, Hmm. you have written a lot of books and I think people can research that. But what are the books which have influenced you and are there three books you would recommend everybody to read? Khalil Gibran's. What is Khalil Gibran's book? The Prophecy. Khalil Gibran. Khalil Gibran's The Prophecy. Very good. And which is the other book? Deepak Chopra's Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. It sells even today. And you know, that book came 20 years before Secret. Wow. And it it is still better than The Secret. The only thing is that the secret cracked it big time with the word packaging the secret and it took off and it was a social media generation. 
And you know, and again, what I just told you, so Deepak Chopra is somewhere. It almost feels like if you have a billionaire, or only when <laughs> Deepak Chopra will listen to, or you can yeah, listen yeah. to Deepak Chopra, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So, which is what, while the secret was, you know, anybody with 200 rupees can get the correct, secret. Correct, 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 correct. And the and the third book, and the third book, third book. Ha! Huh, there was a very good yogi who you know migrated to Norwegian country. His name is Selva Rajan Yesudian. I think that book, uh, book is called Yoga for Life. Selva Rajan Yesudian. And there are only, I book one of his, I, I got one of his second hand books for 5,000 rupees on eBay. Second hand book for 5,000. Yeah. Wow. That's something. Amazing book. So these are three books which I've really, and I'll give you one more secret. I've never read any book end to end. Selective reading. It comes to me. Mm. When the master is ready, the the words will offer itself on the buffet of wisdom. Bruce Lee, of course, your uh, <laughs> your other. So the buffet of wisdom is additional. Yeah. So who are the who are your ideals? Of course, you have already we spoke about Bruce Lee for sure. Who are the other people? Osho, who Osho, Bruce Lee, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi Ji, Sadguru Ji, then Ek Aak Marne Wale Baba Ramdev Ji, <laughs> then Ma, Ma Hansa Ji. B.K. Sayangar Ji, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar Ji, and they will always remain there. I have no ambitions to go beyond them because each journey unfolding is so unique. And like you told me about reaching out to people, how it's been four or five years, I've been toying with the idea of making an app called Get Mickeymized. And the whole app, Get Mickeymized, is all about individual transformation. And individual means indivisible duality. Indivisible, indivisible, and dual is duality. Mm. So it's actually indivisible duality, which means your uniqueness. And the whole thing is about how do we get a person anchored, calm, collected, integrated in Shunyam Koshan and help him navigate his life towards evolution of mankind, not weight loss. So, you know, I've conceived this idea long, long back. But whenever I talk to investors, etc., they say, what is this idea? We don't understand. It doesn't work out with us. Okay. When the time is right, things will happen. So what is your most prized possession which you bought for less than 5,000 rupees or 10,000 rupees, whatever? <laughs> less than 5,000 bucks and my prized possession. Five, five or 10,000, whatever, you know. Something which everybody can buy. Is there a product which is really you have loved? Which you would say, yes, you should buy I'm a, I'm a sucker for big brands and big ticket things. But if you were to say about big ticket things, then there was a time I bought a Mercedes GL, but 5,000 things, I don't remember. 10,000, chalo, we'll increase. Anything which is worth less than 10,000. Okay, then, okay, then let me tell you that my first ever, first ever sports watch Seiko, which I bought from Nankin Watch Company, in Nankin building in Singapore in 1986. Mm. And I was flashing it those days, teen chabi wala gadi, hexagon cut, crystal glass, water resistant. And that I cherish for a long, long time. Mm. And what are your favorite uh, destinations, holiday destinations or places where you want people to go anywhere? In India, Panjgani, in India, Panjgani. Very much Panjgani because very close to nature. Even Amir Khan's destination is Panjgani because he grew up shooting all the movies, no, his grandfather and family. Uh, I would say outside of India, in America, New Jersey, where my cousins live, amazing. It's a garden state, very quiet, very green, mountains, lakes, rivers. As a city, I like London very much. Well, as a place for a short holiday, I would love Dubai. But there is one place I've worked in my life for a year and a half, Oman. Mm-hmm. I'm raring to go there again because it is a very serene, very deep in culture, rich in culture country. And my favorite cuisine is Gujarati uh, Thali from Thakkar, Kalba Devi. Ah. The best. And then I, I like food from Swati, Soham. And I like Maharashtrian food. There's a hole in the wall in Girgaam called Prakash. So they're Piyush. Sabudana Vada, Sabudana Khichidi, Kothumbir Vadi, Misal, Piyush, and then of course, uh, Kharvas. Also, there is something called Ladu Samarad in Parel. Great Vadas with Rajgira Puris, Great Pohe. 
So I'm a sucker for all these things. Yeah, you you really know your places. I think you should be writing a soon a cookbook <laughs> and a travel book also. So I am speaking to Samir Malkani, and we are starting something called the Green Brigade, which means we are going to get most of the restaurant owners and farmers and kanyas into processes of healthy living, whether it's cooking or sourcing or whatever. So some or the other, I'm trying to get there. I was with Four Seasons doing a program for the employees for two nights, early, and the next I'm going to do in Bangalore Four Seasons, and God willing, I'll be doing all over Asia. So. I launched something called Dr. Mickey Mehta's Food for Gods, and I gave them my recipes and menus, and we we made desserts without sugar. So one of the desserts was made out of isabgul, coconut water, water chestnuts, and honey. Wow! And isabgul, you know, it's nobody could fiber. make out it was isabgul. It's fiber. Fiber. Nobody could make out. Then in the afternoon, we made a I made a chiku halwa with chiku blended with dry figs blended, and then we put them into slices. And put magaj on it means seeds, grated seeds. No, no, and we put only uh, no, no added sugar at all. Only chiku and the figs. Hmm, amazing, amazing. So, uh, finally, how do you want people to remember you whenever you decide to leave your body? I mean, there is something. One, I'm very sensitive. I can cry. I mean, eyes can roll out. I mean, tears can roll out very easily. They become moist very easily. I can forgive at the drop of a hat. I don't hate probably anybody in the, on this earth at all. So somebody who loved a lot. Mm. Somebody who was very compassionate. Well, absolutely. See, there is in 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 in, in Sanskrit there is a word called antar sahan bhuti, and in English there is no direct translation mm-hmm. to it. Empathy comes very little close only. Antar sahan bhuti. Similarly, there is no direct translation to anubhav and anubhuti. See, there are so Sanskrit is not a it is not a language. It is a perfected science of transformation. And people who speak trans uh, Sanskrit, they engage from epiglottis because it's vibration oriented. It creates a change, transform in the field, and that field manifests into reality. And they also they also engage with your polyvagal. You know your vagus nerve and your aorta behind your umbilical cord, and this vibration, mind gut axis vibration, can make you a god. Amazing. So I think for now, I don't know whether I am a god or you are a god, but we are all certainly Mickey Mice. On the path. We On are the Mickey path. Mice, and Mickey oh. Mice is literally <laughs> the right term which has been coined by none other than Mickey Mehta because I think this state which we have got in with these conversations around science, around technology, around health, around yoga, around meditation and around his own unique personality. Somebody who started from nothing and he wants to go to nothing, right? That's the amazing part. He doesn't want to do amazing. He wants to go from nothing to nothing. Yeah. But his journey, how he grew up, uh his discipline i think if one thing you have to really learn is discipline is the foundation yeah. and then your destiny is driven by your own choices by hmm. what you decide whether it's your mouth whether it's your mind whether it's your eyes whether it's your body all the stuff you are absorbing is your destiny your choice hmm. and with that all i can tell you is that i'm waiting for calling you for yet another episode i think one episode just cannot be enough always to cover the entire gyan of uh, of mickey but i think this is a great eye opener because like i said that you know mickey mehta ji uh, is really this enigma which everybody thinks you cannot absorb but when you talk to him in my conversation each one of you will feel that he's an idea whose time has not just come it was always there we were not ready to absorb the idea but now it has happened so once again thanks a lot miki really happy to have you on the show and i am looking forward to this episode going out and people bombarding you with becoming your followers and becoming miki mice i think my parting message to my uh, audience would be that i have written 10 commandments of wellness commandment number 1 let wellness be the religion number 1 because religions divide wellness unites wellness cleanses you purifies you integrates you regulates you and makes you a better devout hindu muslim christian parsi number 2 join a wellness revolution for human evolution not for weight loss please not for vanity number 
the best exercise for bicep is to uplift the poor. The best exercise for shoulders is to take responsibilities of the underprivileged. The best exercise for strong legs is to be rooted in humility, to be better rooted in humanity. Sleep every night with a wish to heal yourself. Wake up every morning with a promise to heal the world. And then we can get naturalized, energized, optimized, maximized, internalized, eternalized, evolutionized, revolutionized, mesmerized, hypnotized, synchronized, synergized, regularized, revitalized, specialized, into wellness, initialized, all negativities neutralized with Vishal Gondal Goki and Audacity podcast we can all get minimized. (laughs) <laughs> thanks a lot thanks a lot I think I think this was an amazing episode thanks a lot Vicky yeah. working Monday to Friday glued to your chair making you feel dull worry not get your 5 minute weekly dose of travel around the world with postcards from nowhere join me every Thursday as I explore the strange obscure and fascinating parts of the world and bring out facets of travel you may not have thought of before. You can find us on the IBM Podcast app, website, or wherever you get your podcast from. If you love cricket, listen up. The Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast is here for you. Hosted by DJ, Varun, and me, Ashwin, we bring a fun, fresh fan's point of view to talking all things cricket. Sometimes it's just the three of us, sometimes we have guests, including current and former international cricketers. For new episodes every week, check out the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast on the IVM app, website, or wherever you get your podcasts.